<laughs> no, 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 no. I have enough to say thank you very much. <laughs> so anyway, but um, welcome to, I'd like to say welcome to the two of you. I hope you'll come and at least come to the window and see how we're checking out, sending out the books to the patrons. Uh, I'm likening it to the Florence Plague wine window because they had these little windows with arched tops, which we have much, many things in the library like that. And they would, you would have put your money through and they would hand you a glass of wine. Well, now oh. they're starting, they're starting to use them again for this. So that's a little nicer, little sort of than using McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> I do have McDonald's bags though, that if you want, I can put your books in the McDonald's bag too. So what we do, is we hand out a bag that has handles with your materials so that we hope once we check it out and put it in the bag, we don't touch the item for however long it takes before the patron comes in. So everybody seems to be very pleased with it and it's working extremely well. So just to let you know, that's what we're doing from our side. So if you want to place a hold on a book and pick it up from me, um, we will send you an email, not like the Jones, but it'll come from CW Mars and then we will check it out to you after it's, the message has been sent and then it's in your record. I'll always take it off if it's a mistake or you don't get there, but anyway, and all the fines. But people appreciate that. They like it a lot, that they know that we haven't touched the, and Jones, I'm afraid, puts everything in quarantine for seven days. Uh, so it slows everything down. But anyway, it's working very well. We've, we've been the recipient several times. My, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My, uh, my, my now six-year-old has checked out a couple books, one of them on snakes, which was terrifying, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm hoping Jones will send down, um, you if you want, I mean, you can even call us and ask us to pull off what we've got. But again, uh, Jones is doing these book bundles and I think they're going to be working with the schools, but we're going to be the delivery and drop off point for the school. But if anybody wants it, they, they can say they want to pick up a bundle of you give them a, whatever they do and we can hand you the bundle that comes down from Jones. So we're trying to work with the other libraries too. So it works really well. So I haven't done that part yet, but it should be fun. And so Jennifer, um, do you want to officially start this meeting? Sure. We just need someone to, yep. Yeah. So I have to have a date to record. So the meeting's actually started. Yes. So let's do this. Let's officially start. <laughs> All right, 10.06 a.m. Anything else? <laughs> No, so I have the, uh, let's see. Oh. Call to order, opening remarks, announcements, introductions, and re agenda review. So Sue, do you know, did you, we haven't uh, met yet, right? So uh, I know Jennifer from before. Uh -huh. Remember she was at our meeting last time. Right, and right before the pandemic. Yes, <laughs> the beginning of quite it. Quite an experience. We all say that. Uh, and obviously, I've I've met is it Alan. Alex. Okay, so I met him through the window, and yes. Susan. I don't know if she's been here or not. So, but I know people do know who she is. So I hope she'll stop, stop by. And also, we have a brochure that was done in 1988 about the building, which. I'll send it to Jennifer, so then maybe, or I'll put it in your bag when you come and get it. Uh, and it's very nice drawings, et cetera. They were advertising the building at that time. So I thought you'd be interested in seeing it. Fantastic. Okay. And then, so up next, we've got um, public comment, except for we don't have anyone in the public, so we can <laughs> skip that piece and then I don't know if, as trustees, if you all have um, something that you would want to speak about. I just really quickly, Sue, you are the one that's in the building consistently, and we obviously have not been going <coughs> in. I just wanted to ask you, how how is the HVAC system working? <laughs> Does it seem to be OK? Because that was a concern. Um, when I was in there consistently, it was a concern that it would turn on and off frequently. Uh, yes, I had to move down the hall. You're seeing me in the mystery room because we weren't allowed to have two people in the 
main library space uh, all the time. So I'm down the hall, so I'm on your furnace. And I can say that if it gets really chilly, I call somebody, they zip it up for a little bit. Uh, you know, I text, I, I text Jeremiah and or Ralph and they will play with it. The library, we don't have to worry about. Sometimes it gets a little too hot, but that's a totally different furnace than yours. Oh, so I'm on that one. Yeah, because it can get really hot, especially the hallway and the, the mystery room. So basically they're trying to keep it rather low. And if I need a little oomph and heat, plus I have a, I have a, a little space heater that I can warm up in the mystery room. So we are keeping it. So I can't comment when you have your class because it's gonna be- And that's been a long time ago, right? Yeah. And you know, if it gets way too hot, I will text them and say, look, you gotta, you gotta tamp it down. You still gotta play with it. It's still one of these things that, yeah, it's still a mess. Mm -hmm. But again, that's what we're doing. We're trying to keep it because we're not really in the space. Sure. Uh, they are sure. painting it. I will tell you that, that they're painting the walls right now. Oh, they are. Okay. Um, so I hope you get in contact with Jeremiah because he's also, he's done some wonderful things for us. And he's the one in charge of looking at the building. And I'm hoping, I'm still waiting for a fire alarm um, since uh, 1984, which I don't understand why it doesn't even ring in the, I understand why we don't have a pull lever system here, but it seems to me it should be ringing in the fire to station. And they keep telling me they have people coming and looking, but that's my goal after all this time is to finally get a fire alarm. But otherwise the heat system, you're still gonna have trouble with, and it's gonna, it's not, it's not functioning well either. So, but it works for us. Okay, thank you, thank you. I know that you're separate and, but since you're in the building, I was just wondering, you know, if you had noticed. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, we're in the building every day during the week. Um, I'm here some days from nine to 5.30, that'll be the day when the window is open. So that's Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday, or Thursday and Monday, we may be leaving early because I don't work a full 40 hours or. 37 and a half and my assistant comes in in the morning and then we might there might not be any anybody in the building but I can give you my cell and you can always text me if there's a problem so oh great that would be good yeah that's what I do all the time with Jeremiah sorry Jeremiah heat <laughs> <laughs> um I was also concerned I hope I mean jump in you guys I don't want to be the one talk, doing all the talking if you know um, but I was wondering about the cleaning and Sue, unfortunately you, you are again, the only one in there. So maybe how often is Jeremiah in there, um, these days cleaning? Don't worry about the cleaning. Mary is here every morning oh, during the week from yes. nine to 12. Jen, I think you and I talked about this. And, uh, so she, in fact, they've been doing the walks today. They had some problems. So no, I have to say, I've never seen, of course, we aren't even having people in here, but I have to say, I've never seen it look better ever. I mean, awesome. they're painting, they know they have to do that little part where you had the, did you have a mop over there where they, where the lights turn on? Yes. Yeah, that, I couldn't believe how bad that room was. And I think they'll be working on that too. But right now they've just done under the wainscoting. And then I guess they're gonna bring in some uh, scaffolding. So Mary is also doing that painting too. So, and she comes in and squirts everything down for us. So I have to say it's beautiful. Everything awesome. is gorgeous, don't worry. So when you said you couldn't believe how bad it was in that room, you mean dirty? You mean, oh, the plaster's coming off. I had never seen it like that before. Um, so I don't know whether it's a leak in the roof or what's going on, because I've never seen that before. And I'm sure she will patch it up when she gets to that part and they will get that because Jeremiah told me. Okay, so Jeremiah. Because I was first seeing it like that. I don't know what happened. Yeah. So and we're just. He, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, you, you need to get on to your other stuff. Well, that is part of the actions and discussions and we're still under reports and comments. So I'm just gonna try and scoot us by um, through. And so Alex, I, um, and Jennifer too, we have to do like a little bit of welcome to local government. Oh, so God. I just have to give you a, a couple of pointers specific that 
during the public comment portion, um, someone might speak about something, but we're not allowed to, to respond during the public comment. So um, typically, if you know that somebody has something that they want you to put on the agenda, they sh you should have them send it to me and then I will send it out to you guys to be put on the agenda. Um, otherwise, what ends up happening is say they wanted to talk about the fees, right? So then they would go to the meeting and speak about it during public comment and then you wouldn't be able to respond. And then if you wanted to, you could put it on the next meeting, but seeing how we meet like four times a year, three times a year, um, that could take a while. So they should always yep. check in or get back to me about that. Um, and I'm trying to think of what else is the really like key items. Um, that's the biggest one and it becomes a little bit of a violation. And then also at the same time for Alex and Jennifer, um, you know, separate, you cannot speak on as on behalf of Munson outside of our meetings. So if the two of you were at an event that could be considered to be um, a violation of the open meeting law. So if you guys are at celebrate or if all three of you were together, that's a quorum and more than the quorum. And so you have to be kind of careful with that as well. Okay. I'm, for instance, the Human Rights Commission where every year we read the Declaration of Human Rights um, outside on the town common. And I posted a meeting because all of the members or the majority of the members were going to be there. And so that we weren't in open, you know, open violation, violation of the open meeting law, we posted a meeting. So um, your power is as a group, not individually or separately. I don't know how much power months and trustees have but you know that's what that's 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 that speech right there so uh, okay so jen yeah just to clarify, like it, so i if i email outside of this meeting alex and sue crutch no there's none of that there's none of well you can email them like if you received an excellent compliment about Munson and you wanted to share you can but people can't respond so if you were like hey guys you know I spoke to so and so and I think we need to meet send me that your availability that would put you guys in in violation of open meeting law so the correct way to handle that is reply separately to Jen so in other words in local government we do not like to reply to all when it comes to our boards and committees, there's no reply to all that um, causes you to be in, in violation of the open meeting law. So the best way to do that is to kind of filter anything like that through me. Um, okay. and, and that way we can do it, handle it that way. Okay, got you. Jennifer, I just have a quick question on that. We post on the Facebook, uh, no, the, the Jones Library page who the trustees are. Would you want us to put your email on that to get in touch with them? For contact, yes, please. Yeah, okay, I will. You, Thank you. And you want, do you have a, just a separate one for the meetings or is it always your personal one at the town? So the Munson Memorial emails um, right now are, are going to Rob Mora and IT is in the process of switching that over to me. So okay. it'll be me. Okay, so I'll, I'll wait on that because there's no rush, but. We do put it up and I just wanted to check with you about that. Yeah. So um, that's my little speech on, on local government 101. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. I have a lot to learn. <laughs> so I think that um, action and discussions, we have 3A, which is vote on chair and vice chair and clerk. Since there's three of you, that leaves a role for everyone. However, Susan is not here and um, we should wait on that maybe till the next meeting. There's no rush or anything. Um, and so then building maintenance is heating and cooling. And then we have facilities and upkeep indoor and outdoor. So if you wanna talk some more about heating and cooling or if you're satisfied with what has already been discussed, we can move on to facilities um, upkeep. I do have a question. Mm -hmm. 
okay. um, since the, the subject of heating and cooling came up. I, I'd, I'd be interested to hear, you know, how is how is the building heated and is there is there an air conditioning cooling system? No, the building has two furnaces. It has a separate one in the main library part that just heats the stack room and the library. That part has air conditioning only. The Jones pushed that through several years ago. The main hall has, they've just retrofitted these furnaces like crazy. Uh, we even had an oil spill once, which I won't get into. Anyway, so that is another furnace, which is next downstairs where the restrooms are. And there's a door that goes into it. That heats the hall and the little room I'm in and the hallway. We have one, we do have one vent that they left that's in the back room of the library room. But again, we have a totally separate one. So there's delivery to both. Um, the problem is in the, it's the thermostat. I think the thermostat, and I could be wrong. We have to ask somebody else. But I remember they said the thermostat was in the basement. So that's another sticky wicket as to how it heats the hall. So then basically the only way for years, we were turning, we, things were getting so hot, it was horrible. We were turning off the emergency switch for both furnaces, we had to. Now I text somebody and say, please zip it up because it's now on one tablet somewhere or our computer downtown. So that's how we do it. So they're both separate and they're very old and they've been retrofitted. We do have the safety equipment that was put on the furnace when we had a problem. So. I think it's up to code at that part. If do you have any other questions about that? No, no. I just wanted to you know, kind of yeah. familiarize myself as best I could. I know yeah. they've been talking about the split system, you know, that they have. Um, and again, um, you know, they come through, they say the stuff, and you got to pin them down because I, you know, they don't. I'm sorry, it doesn't happen. And I believe there is money that has been allocated uh, years ago for some of these projects. But again, remember, prices have gone up. So that's another problem. There have been requests for air conditioning in the hall in the summertime. I would suggest if you're going to do that, you really should try and get other groups using it. I mean, it's kind of silly to, or split it up that the library part has separate air conditioning in this room and, the, and have the hall on something totally different because you don't need to be running it all the time. And we have all those beautiful windows. So that has been an issue. So I just also, and maybe Jennifer can speak to this. I'm sorry, I'm the only one in the office at the moment. So I have, I've been answering the, the phone at the same time during this. Um, so I know that I've gone into Munson in the meeting space. I call the meeting room the downstairs. Um, on a like on a on a Sunday at 8 a.m. and it was boiling hot in there, which is kind of like unneeded and unnecessary. And then on the flip side, I've been in there um, upstairs and it's either boiling hot or freezing cold. So there's like there's a lack of balance, and then we're also wasting, you know. Oh yeah. Obviously electricity, although we don't always know when people are going. Well, we do know, but that's, I don't know how to program our system to reflect when people are going to be using the Munson, but at a nine o'clock on a Sunday, it was, we had to open up the windows, which only yes. makes the, the heater work yeah. harder. Exactly. So that's, um, that's a problem. Um, and then as far as it goes with upkeep, I, when Munson reopens, I would like us to have, and hopefully nobody will take advantage of it, like the TV thing. Um, oh, yeah, but when several people have events there and there's not really anything to clean the tables off with. And so we can either say to the individuals renting um, to the renter, you need to bring your own cleaning supplies to clean up minus a broom and a dustpan, or we can supply those in the Munson because what ends up happening is you go to have an event, you pull out the tables and the tables are, are dirty, mm -hmm. which is y yikes, right? Oh yeah. So, um, and you know, the floor needs to be swept. So on my end, I always tell people, you know, please leave it in, in the um, same manner that you, you found it, but we should have an overall bigger discussion for when we get ready to open back up, how we want to handle that. 
And I have to say COVID, even after we open up, is going to change things. So you may really have to revamp everything. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I will say we, everybody who, oh, I didn't get, I have to sign in. We are signing everybody into the building so we can do contact tracing um, just in case something happens. So far, my staff has been fantastic. Uh, but I want to tell you that you're going to have to take that into consideration when you open up, because I'm sure they're not going to just open it up the way it was before. So yep. that's down and contract there. tracing is, is that's pretty, I mean, to sign in is, should be fine um, and have their guests sign in. So the building is also unstaffed. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was the, the outside upkeep maintenance, the yard and the planting and the flowers. So it seems like in the past that the um, trustees were doing that work. Am I wrong there, Sue? Like Claudia O'Brien was doing Claudia that? Claudia had been on the board for years and we, what, we had a volunteer, that's way back when, doesn't matter. And so she got several people from the neighborhood and they would come over and do the garden. Now, this is the, you've referred to the garden club the garden club you may want to get in touch with them and find out what they feel now because they used to give the libraries money to buy garden books and then because north Amherst put in that garden the garden club decided instead of buying books they would take care of that garden and supposedly our garden from my understanding i could be wrong but again claudia was doing it and so there wasn't any reason for them to do it but now that she's not on the board, and I'm a little worried about her, about her but anyway, um, so now you have a choice as to what to do. Contact them. I can't guarantee you they'll really be here and clean up like crazy. But again, that's my end of the story that I know about. Yep. And so in the meantime, Mary, the facilities maintenance person who works here and over at Munson has been doing the upkeep outside. So we kind of need to fit a make a create a process moving forward so that if as how Claudia left and then it just kind of fell in the hands of Mary and there's two pieces to it, right, because there's the overall larger mowing, which I really feel like DPW should be doing as opposed to Mary. Um, they are doing some of it. Okay. Uh, Mary, so, they, they can't come in in some places. They can't get, get to the hole. You know, be, their equipment's too big. Mm -hmm. And so that also would include like mowing and um, snow removal. And if it's not DPW, then it's facilities it's for the job. snow. Yep, it's gone. We're ready for this afternoon. So Mary has been very diligent and I gather she was here and it bangs last last night and well she's on vacation. Mary? Yes. She is? Yes. She's here today. Is she? Well, she was on vacation at least Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So um I don't know that Mary necessarily, other than maybe the sidewalk piece of it or whoever's in facilities should be doing that. Um, the major part for the for the sidewalk. And I think there's an issue about it, them getting close enough to the curb and clearing that out. Um, yeah, we have had trouble in the past where DPW would come along and they would just mow the street. So then because the parking is in the front, they left, especially for the older folks, and they left this little wall of snow and we had a big fight about it last year and I think we or the year before I can't remember and I said look you got we've got people who could have canes and whatever else and these are the handicapped spots you've got to you know it was just so hard to clean up so it's been better so this is something I hope Jeremiah can work out with all of this stuff and see how he's done a little better job coordinating already with DPW but that is an issue so that's my end of the story oh. of that. Today we are set, we are fine, driveway is beautiful, everything's great. I wonder, Sue, is that you as a caller? I don't know if she'll be able to. Shouldn't be, I'm on my, I'm on my. No, Susan Crutch. Oh. Susan Crutch, is that you? The... 
She's muted. Okay. I don't remember that. I think you press A if you're muted and to unmute, but perhaps it's not Susan. So um, then also, I think it would be great if you as the trustees decided or what to do about the flowers in general, because that that's the part that is seems like it might be more of the trustees responsibility or to delegate who should be doing the upkeep of the actual garden. Um, mm -hmm. just so that we have that and okay I'm not a green thumb person I kill everything in my home I try <laughs> but it dies so um I I love to garden um so I'm very happy I'm happy to do it and I'm happy to try to maintain what's already existing there which is so beautiful um but is there I guess I should go by and see if there's actual maintenance that needs to be done right now like is it a mess I don't know no, I Mary, think Mary's yeah. cleaned it up Mary's cleaned Mary it up. great she's well, very very good but I would like so it's not really in her her responsibility so if we could remove that piece from her that would be good um you. so and uh, sorry Jen I, at one at some point is it okay for me or one of us to reach out to Claudia and see if she wants to continue because she loved it or no I think that that is fine if you reach out to Claudia I would just still say that the res overall responsibility will be with the trustees to upkeep the garden because what we don't want is like we just had Claudia kind of stopped and then nobody sure. was um Got you. doing the upkeep and then Mary came and started to do the upkeep. So even if Claudia wants to still be involved as as um, trustees, you should still um, be in contact and, and, and doing some of the upkeep of that. And I guess the bigger question would be is what is the, the annual versus perennial scenario going on in the garden, <laughs> right? So yeah. that's yeah. the piece where you need some. And actually, you know, if you I can speak with Mary. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It would be, um, you know, just from my perspective, I think just to get a, um, an idea of what is currently planted and maybe not do an entire inventory, but at least get a, um, a sense of what is it, what is planted and, and what the maintenance needs would be. Mm. Um, and then, and then come up with a schedule because, um, you know, but me and my family, we're, we're just a mile down the road here. So we'd be happy to, to pop over in the spring several times to, yeah. to help. And we're really close to same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will tell you, it, the last two years, it's been spectacular. <laughs> and there are a lot of annuals and perennials so it's it's not like it's a simple garden that's what yeah. i'm trying to say it's <laughs> okay. on, there's probably like 25 different varieties of plants oh fantastic so, right so yeah. it's a big job but it's really um i think they have really set a beautiful foundation with the perennials that if we didn't really like if we felt like it was too exquisite you know too much for us elaborate we could just literally with the perennials that are there, yeah. the maintenance of the perennials still, it's gorgeous, yeah. you know? All right. Well, um, but yeah, we'll, I we'll be available in the spring. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I, I don't know, um, you know, and, and, and Jennifer, you may know, I mean, if it makes more sense to do an inventory in, in the spring, or if it makes sense to reach out to a former trustee to do an inventory. Um, well, you know what, I think that, um, it would be great if you guys kind of checked it out at the very earlier part of spring when stuff starts to develop. And then, you know, we could even do like a Munson Memorial garden party, right? Like if, if that is, if we can be in contact, but it's outside. So you could have people socially distanced um, because there's a lot of people in South Amherst that really love the gardening, the garden there and, and just the building overall. And, and it also makes it a little more welcoming and you know everybody's been overwhelmed and tired from all of the coronavirus 
like fatigue, right? Like sure. being stuck in the house and exactly. only like contact with kids. I haven't had like non-work adult conversations in a while, you know, so everybody's kind of there and um, oh, there's Susan. Hi, Sue. <coughs> Excuse me. Hi, Susan. Sometimes that mute button is. Well, she, I, you know, sometimes it takes a while for it to the audio to, to kick yeah. in. Yeah. Susan? Hello, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can't hear you, though. It doesn't appear that she's muted either, so. Do you have headphones plugged in? Do you have to tell your computer to, con are you using your computer totally? If you are, you have to tell it to connect the voice. She looks like she's on the phone. Okay. Hmm. Oh, you know, it could be a setting. I was in a Google Meet meeting and I don't typically use that. And then I was trying to talk and they were like, and it said something about like, um, go into settings and I was like I'm in the middle of the meeting I can't like go into settings I could drop the whole call <laughs> like so it could be something like that um Susan there's a question answer oh we don't have it up there that's too bad okay I think she's going to try and figure it out um so I guess I, you know, that was all I really wanted to say about the, um, the upkeep of the outside and we can update Susan when she comes back. Um, and then, you know, it's kind of hard to go over the rental of the Munson Memorial Library right now because nobody's going to be using it anytime soon at the moment. So, um, we, and even when it does open up for rental, I'm sure that there'll be capacity limits at the time. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, we just lost Susan. Oh. And Jen, I mean, given the nature of different classes too, like I don't know that I, depending on what happens with the whole thing, right? With COVID and how safe it yeah. is to still get together. Like yoga for me inside, it's so much about the breath that I don't even feel comfortable teaching inside I, I don't know when I will be comfortable again do you know what I mean and like dancing you're you're really you know exhaling a lot and breathing a lot it's just very interesting well and then it's also there's happening. the the issue of who's going to be available to disinfect after each use so it's it I mean my guess is the Munson won't open up for rental purposes in a while um sure. so I believe that I did did I forward you guys oh so I you know I think some things to think about until the next time we meet is a the fee scale so I can send everybody the application that has the fees listed I you know I'd like to keep them affordable for the it sh they should be kept affordable for the public um but they are super super affordable right so for nonprofits right now it's fifteen dollars an hour right um and so I don't I don't necessarily recommend that we raise it to $50 an hour, but I think we can go up a little bit from the 15 for the nonprofit. Um, and then also, and then I think if you're for profit Amherst resident, it's 25 an hour. And then it's 
thirty dollars an hour if you are non Amherst resident. So those are all still pretty reasonable. So those are some things to think about. Um, the building rental agreement that I created, which I will forward to you all, is, is pretty straightforward. The key distributions of another issue that I've been trying to um, have worked on for a while. So basically, someone came to rent the Munson who hadn't rented it for two to three years, but they still had the key. So, oh. yeah. There, let me just jump in here. They have they have had talk about putting in a keypad where you'd have a number. Uh, I don't know if that'll ever happen, but that might be easier to to work with because then you could change it quickly and not worry about checking out the key and collecting the keys and all of that stuff. And key fees, because right now I accept yeah. a check for $25 and I don't even process it um, yeah. because it goes right back unless I don't receive the key back and then I'll process it. Um, and so that's pretty much what's on our agenda for today. Um, unless you guys have other things in addition or more additional questions. I, I, I do. Um, Jennifer, would, would it be possible to, you know, related to fees, would it be possible to get a co copy of, you know, the, the budget or a balance sheet of some sort so we can get, gain a, a better understanding of kind of, um, kind of how, how all these things interplay with things like, you know, heating and cooling and, and, and you know, maintenance and, you know, um, you know, if things like flowers need to be purchased for outside as, as, as course of our, um, you know, duties as trustees, mm -hmm. would it be possible to kind of get a sense of what the mm -hmm. budget is? Yep. I, so I can send you what I have and I can look in, um, I think I'm, it's halfway library and halfway town to, to get the other remaining budget. I will say that um, the two groups that rent office space there, Amherst, Edu Amher AEF, and, um, the Garden Club. Is it the Orchid it's, Society? No, it's, it's the, the Orchid, Orchid Society. Society. So they don't necessarily pay rent. We get a donation check of a of you know of, of some unspecified amount um, every once in a while, and that's what covers, I think, their yeah their rent you know their usage. But besides that, it's you know most people the folks who have every Friday dances and items like that are the folks and it's still, it's just like 50 bucks because they're only renting it for two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, so the, so the rental fees aren't, aren't, you know, you know, thinking in the long term. you know, 2021 is a walk uh, let as me, well. Uh, also the Jones library pays $6,500 for renting the space. I know. <laughs> Well, so, so and part of your budget. And what I will say is that um, the library is its own entity from the town, although we work together, right? So it's yeah. the town of Amherst and then it's the libraries yeah. who has their own trustees and their own budget separate from the town. Um, and yes, they do pay rent to to use the town building at Munson. So yes, I can get you that budget information. Yeah. Well, I just, you know, again, with, with COVID, the uncertainty of, of what 2021 is going to look like, it doesn't sound like fees are, are, are a substantial amount of, of the annual budget, but, um, you know, if you zero those out, which it looks like that's a possible, you know, being able to do out exterior maintenance, flowers, things like that. So. Yep. And I think that the Orchid Society maybe donate some flowers. I'm not quite sure about that or not. Um, that I don't know. I can't answer yep. that. Okay. I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure about that piece of it, but what mm -hmm. I will say is with, if we do open up with COVID, if it's open up for rental, there's the 
issue of do we have to have somebody in there to disinfect after use, which would mean now we're paying for staff to go over there in yeah. addition to what Mary's already doing because it's at a different level of, of work at a, yeah. you know, so um, that's another um, thing to think about. Okay. So with it being kind of a wash, right? No, not a lot of money coming in. That makes me think about fundraising. Should we maybe talk about that next time? Yeah, let me find out what can be done. I don't know what can be done for fundraising for months they and it's did, a town entity. I can answer a little bit. They did set up a Friends of the Munson building several years ago with a tax number. I don't know, Jennifer, if they have any information about that downtown, but uh, yes, they used, that's why I did had this brochure that was part of the thing and people did give money a lot for the garden but that's basically there was something set up so check into it and see what you can find because yeah, i don't know what's happened to it so the the way that munson operates is for from the town i know that where that fund is because that's how we filter the donation money through now that comes from um aef and um the orchid society so oh, okay um, but yet, and then I know that, for instance, like there is a TV down, is the TV still downstairs, Sue? Yeah, I'm hoping I can uh, dig up the money to replace it. I think somebody pushed it over. I didn't want it on that stand anyway, but um, this was my idea too, because we've been asked, I've been asking for it for over 10 years because I thought it would extend our use of meetings and possibly we could show a uh, a film for the kids or some kind of program or whatever. And so finally they did it and we had it two weeks and somehow I walked in and Jen saw it. She saw that it was all cracked in the screen and we were shocked because it, I had it, just checked it the weekend before. It so really looked like somebody had stabbed it with like a key or something the way that the crack Well, it was a little occurred. sort of crooked so I thought maybe it did fall but it's um, a Samsung and it really, uh, I could, I'm Samsung and boy, it was so easy to transfer. And we had all the cables so you could run a meeting and show the documents. So if somehow we can replace that, we'll have to, but it was really so sad to see, but I don't think it's worth replacing right now because of course we're not open. Right, but I just, and, and as Sue said, the, the thought behind it for me too was that we could, upgrade the meeting room with um yeah. with having the tv down there where you could use bluetooth where you could use your projector where you you know there was just a, a range of things that you could do with that um and and we finally got it and then it was <laughs> broken so there is yeah and i think we thought that they were putting a plastic safety guard on it so i'm not quite sure what happened there so those are things to think about that if they do replace that tv how can they make it safe yeah. um, and i had suggested putting it on the wall and i was and i think you jennifer were upset about it too because we i knew something was going to happen and it's not heavy enough to make it it sort of talk heavy in a way when i mean to say so I still thought it was a very shaky situation that they did. So, but we, that was out of our hands. <laughs> yep. So it was just, um, yeah, that was pretty disappointing. So if you have ideas of how to make that moving forward uh, in a later time to uh, be more stable, that would be great too. So, because okay they won't want to buy us another one if it happens again and yeah. they don't want to buy us another one now so, <laughs> um we have to have a, a little bit of more of a solid plan um and then so and um alex and jennifer is there anything else that you have a question about i know i know it's a bit of a challenge right now but um i've never been in the building other than to the window <laughs> oh Oh, it's so beautiful. I know. And and I don't know, um, you know, obviously I don't want to any, ask anyone to do anything that's outside their comfort zone or, or, or kind of violates any sort of um, 
guidance that we have in place, but would it be possible, say, sometime between now and, and spring to, to get go inside and at least, even if it's just a partially self-guided tour, um, just to kind of familiarize myself with the public spaces? I, I will check with Jeremiah and see what he says about that. Okay. And, and Rob Mora. You know, if you've had a COVID test, I'll let you in. <laughs> Okay. No, we're trying to be very careful. Um, Jones hasn't had a, a case yet. And I only have five staff members. They're here very small periods of time. But well, least, I, I have yeah. no, I have no problem taking a test or fulfilling any any mm -hmm. you know responsibilities. Yeah, whatever. Just check with Jeremiah and see what he says. We're just. Yep. I know we had some problems that some of the teachers still had keys and they wanted to come in and use the bathroom because they were doing Taekwondo in the back. And I finally just said no, because, uh, you know, we didn't know whether they were going to let their students in. Uh, and we were trying to be really, really careful um, for ourselves and everybody else, too. So yeah. basically, okay. you know, I'm sure something would be set up that, And if you want to come in, that would be fine with me. Will you sign in just so we know you were in the building? So talk yep, with that, your I, that I know. Yeah. So, would be a piece of it. Okay. Um, Thank you. And so next on the, uh, is that all? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, Sorry oh, oh, we do have um, a Munson Facebook page. And I just put a picture up of the hall with the arched windows, which is gorgeous. So, I'm a follower. I am a follower. So, oh, did you see it then? Yeah. No, I, ha I haven't been on social media in a couple of days, so. But, okay, uh, so basically, uh, I'm doing that and other things that crop up. We're putting some silly stuff, some good stuff. If you have anything you want me to post about the building, just let me know and we can do that. Too. Yeah, that's great. And it goes mm -hmm. through the town's webpage too. I think there's a link both from the library and the town. Yep. And then I guess the next would be to set the next meeting date which I don't know how, I mean, I just, I guess if I look at a 2021 calendar to meet sometime in March might make sense because it's the beginning of the spring, the flowers are starting to come out. Yeah. We can kind of, or if you wanted to meet in February so we could be more prepared to maybe do like a Munson Memorial Garden Day or and my vote would be for February, just to mm -hmm. you know, give us as much time if, you know, things were looking great and we wanted to, to execute, what a fantastic idea, a library uh, or a garden day. That would be, that would be great. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Yeah. So it's in walking distance for so many folks who walk by it and admire it, so. Absolutely. Yep, and um, so maybe the next meeting, uh, you guys can vote your chair and such. I just lost the agenda because my computer yes. locked or whatever it does that. You put your code back in. Um, no topics that the chair did not reasonably anticipate 48 hours in advance of the meeting. No. And then Jennifer, you have to join us because you are the, in theory, the acting chair. I, I, we just assigned you that because you're the longstanding <laughs> and Alex would need to um, second the motion. Okay. Uh, do we have to decide on a date for the next meeting now? Or are we not doing that? We can decide on a date if you want to. I just know that sometime in February, so it's fine with me. Okay. Um, I, I, I think I'm fine with, with at least, you know, getting back in touch in January, you know, through, through okay. Jennifer's office and, and then planning it there. I mean, maybe a couple of weeks in advance, maybe look at the, the, the second or third, uh, sorry, the third or fourth week in February as, as a target, I, I think that. would work. I was thinking that too. Okay, wonderful. We'll, we'll get back in January. Okay, well, thank you so much. And the meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Seconded. <laughs> <laughs> Have is a great day and a great weekend, everybody. And happy holidays. Yeah, Thank happy you. holidays. Be well. Good to see your faces. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.